I was a baby photographer for 34 years, so this is another language that you probably have forgotten already, but anybody who speaks baby. Okay. Embarrassing my son. That's all right. That's my job, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to come back from lunch. You guys, this has been great so far. We're at about 40 people. We're expecting a few more because we had a lot of people who said they were going to show up after lunch. So this should be interesting. Um, we really, really enjoy having you here, and if you want to continue supporting Monterey County Skeptics, remember that we do have a, um, a meetup on Wednesday that is a, uh, a, just an informal dinner at Lopez's Mexican Restaurant, uh, 7 o'clock to about 9 o'clock, we talk about North Korea, we talk about movies, we talk about our pets, we talk about skepticism, and it's informal, it's, we do that every second Wednesday of every month. And uh, we were hoping to do a lecture series. I also wanted to, the, is something that's upcoming, please join us on Meetup and the Monterey, County, the Monterey County Skeptics as well as the Hamba group. You can meet up on meetup.com and on Facebook. We have a lot more discussion there. Um, I should also mention that this is one of the smallest skeptic conferences that exist, Skeptic Camp. These will, there's many, many more skeptic conferences that come up. Um, there's going to be one in the Bay Area that is sponsored by the Bay Area Skeptics. Woohoo, Bay Area Skeptics! And, um, which I'm not a member, but I do support them on Amazon, Amazon Smiles. And they are going to be doing their lecture, I believe, in June, their conference. And it's like this, but it's a little bit bigger. You know, they'll probably have 300 people, 250, 300 people up in Berkeley one day event. We do conferences, SciCon. Everybody picked up, I hope they're all going to subscribe to Skeptical Inquirer. This started out so many people in skepticism. This is just an amazing magazine. And you'll notice that I'm saying that because I'm actually, if you haven't already noticed, I have an article in here. Um, I should have had it pulled up, but I just thought of it at the moment. But it's an obituary to um, Bob Carroll, one of uh, my skeptical heroes who started Skeptic Dictionary. <laughs> and it's Skeptic. It is Skeptic D-I-C. And this is a photo I took of him at Skeptic, uh, Skeptic Cal. And uh, if you join up our meetup group and our and our our meetup group and our Facebook group, you will know about all these upcoming conferences because we talk about them um, all the time. I tend to go and speak, and I have a lot to do it. I also want to mention on page 19 that there's a there's an article here. The first sentence, the first two words are Susan Gerbeck. Yeah. So you got to be worried about any article that starts Susan Gerbeck, founder of the. You know, then it goes on about some other stuff. It's not so important, but so um, and then I am listed in the very very back under scientific and technical consultants. So I do have documentation that I am a skeptic. <laughs> so <laughs> just autograph our, uh, coffee? Oh yes, I'll autograph your magazines for you if you want. Yeah, that's great. So we're going to come back with, uh, we have a, a full afternoon for you, and we're going to start off with Arland, again with his misattributed quotes. We're not going to do a panel, we decided we're just going to do like we did this morning, followed by Jan. Um, she's got a 10 minute um, talk about a paranormal tour in a prison that she went to. Not that she was in prison, but it was a tour <laughs> she went to. Just, just making that clear. And then uh, all the way from LA, well, Santa Monica, we have Kyle, and we're going to have, then we're going to have uh, Robin Welsh, who's organized the Judge Judge Welsh back in the back. <laughs> Thank you, Judge Welsh. And she's going to be talking about some church and state issues that um, it's going to be really exciting as well. Then we're going to take another break. Leonard Trammell is going to come back, then Ben Radford, and then we're going to go to the close. So we're probably going to easily hit five. So you know, that's just the way it is. And then we're going to go to have food and, you know, relax and so on. So if you need to get more coffee or bananas or whatever or more food, please go ahead and do so. You know the drill. Uh, hopefully everybody's moved their cars that needed to move their cars. So <laughs> um, with that said, oh, one last thing. There is going to be a huge conference that I'm always active participating in, PsyCon, and you'll read about them in the Skeptical Empire magazine. They will be in Vegas. You always have the word baby after Vegas. Vegas baby. It will be Vegas baby and Halloween weekend next year. So, 
Arlen, where are you hiding at? There you oh, are. Right in front of me. You could have bit me and bit the snake. So, Arlen is back. Thank you, thank you, Susan. And you know, more I think about it, Susan, Susan has done so much work. She deserves a round of applause. <laughs> but anyway, I'm back by popular demand, and uh, well, actually, because I've scheduled. Uh, <laughs> with some more quotes, like we did this morning, and if you weren't here this morning, you'll get this, get an idea of what it's all about right now. <laughs> So let's go on to the first quote. The war to end all wars. Your choices are Woodrow Wilson, H.G. Wells, or Winston Churchill. <laughs> Well-known well -known people, and we'll do it like we did this morning, and give you a chance to guess and see if you're right. By the way, did anybody from this morning get more than half of them right? Anybody? No? Okay. Wow, this is tougher than I thought. Okay, uh, how many think Woodrow Wilson was the one who said this first? Okay. How many think H.G. Wells? Okay, pretty even. How about Winston Churchill? Okay, very, very mixed, very even. Uh, the actual uh, person who said it first was H.G. Wells. Yes. Uh, <laughs> On the eve of World War I, Wells published a book that was called The War That Will End War. Okay? Let's go on to the next. The next quote is, Go West, young man, go west. You've all heard that before. We are in the West, obviously. Uh, so you all listen to this person. It, the choices are Horace Greeley, John Steinbeck, or General Anthony Conway. So how many people think Horace Greeley was the one who originated this? Wow, a lot of you. John Steinbeck? Yeah, not too many. And General Anthony Conway? Yeah, that's, that's the name I made up. But this was actually uh, uh, attributed correctly to Horace Greeley. He really did say it, and most people were right about that. So very good. Let's go on to another quote. You're only here for a short while, so be sure and stop and smell the flowers. Your choices are Will Rogers, Walter Hagen, or Ram Dass. Is that Hagen Dass there? <laughs> uh, Hagen was actually a famous golfer, if you really want uh, to. So, of those choices, who was the one that said it first? How many think Will Rogers? Okay. How many think Walter Hagen? Golfer. How many think Ram Das? Okay, a few for all of them. And actually, it was the famous golfer, Walter Hagen, who said that. And uh, in his 1956 autobiography, Hagen wrote, you're only here for a short visit. Don't hurry, don't worry, and be sure to smell the flowers along the way. Okay. Next one. Any man who is not a socialist at age 20 has no heart. Any man who is still a socialist at age 40 has no head. And your choices are Winston Churchill, J.R. Mortensen, and Francois Guzot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Huh? Oh, William Buckley got switched. Okay, never mind. Uh, anyway, that's the wrong answer. So your choice is basically a Winston Churchill. How many people think Winston Churchill said it? How many think Francois Guzot said it? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. All right, fairly even there. It is actually Francois Guzot. Uh, there are various versions of this quote attributed to many people. French historian and state, statesman Guzot has said, not to be a Republican at 20 is proof of want of heart. To be one at 30 is proof of want of head. So, there you go. Um, okay, good. Television is chewing gum for the eyes. Mark <laughs> <Or> Twain. <laughs> Some of you doubt that. Okay. Um, 
Aldous Huxley or John Mason Brown? How many think it's Twain? Okay, I don't know a few of you. How many think it's Aldous Huxley? A few. How many think John Mason Brown? Oh, I think most people, uh, most people got that right. It was John Mason Brown. He actually attributed the quote to a friend of his young son, but he is the one that it will credit as the messenger, so yes, the answer is John Mason Brown. Who is he? Who is he? Well, that's a good question, and I don't have the answer. Uh, okay, life is what happens to you while you're making other plans. You've all probably heard that in various forms. Alan Saunders, John Lennon, or William Hardy. And how many think Alan Saunders? Okay, we've got a couple here. How many think John Lennon? Okay. And how many think William Hardy? I think there's a mix, very even mix. And actually, the person is Alan Saunders. Uh, you, you've, you've heard of uh, part of John Lennon's song, Beautiful Boy. Uh, was in, those words were in that, that song, and that's probably some of you who said uh, John Lennon were probably thinking of that. But Alan Saunders is actually the writer of the comic strip Mary Worth, and he was given credit for saying it by Reader's Digest in 1957. So there you go. Build a better mouse trap, and the world will beat a path to your door. Your choices are Ralph Waldo Emerson, Benjamin Franklin, or Thomas Edison. We're all well-known people. How many think Emerson? How many think Ben Franklin? Okay. How many think Thomas Edison? More people, I think, thought Thomas Edison, which would be a good guess, but it's wrong. The, the person who said it was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, a variation is found in Borrowings, a collection of sayings by members of the First Unitarian Church in Oakland, of which he participated, and which was published in 1889. Okay, a couple more here. Be nice to people on your way up, you'll meet them on your way down. Uh, Walter Winchell, R.G. Torres, or Wilson Misner? How many think Walter Winchell? Well known name. How many think R.G. Torres? Not too many. How about Wilson Misner? <laughs> You're right, William Misner. Uh, he was a playwright, a quipster. Uh, Wilson Misner was reported in the Senate in the San Francisco newspaper on July the 5th, 1932. Walter Winchell used it soon after, but he attributed it to Misner. So it was Walt Wilson Misner. And here's the final one. Give me liberty or give me death. William Wirt, Patrick Henry, or Joseph Addison? How many of you think it might be William Wirt? Nobody's going for that one. How about Patrick Henry? How about Joseph Addison? Surprisingly, it is William Wirt. <laughs> Apparently uh, apocryphal, reconstructed by biographer William Wirt from the recollection of two of Patrick Henry's contemporaries. Also, Joseph Addison's 1713 play, Cato, included the lines, it is now a time to talk of aught, but chains or conquest, liberty or death. So actually, the answer, William Wirt, surprisingly enough. So there you go. Thank you. It's always a lot of fun to have these. And it kind of fits with the theme that we didn't realize that we had a theme, but it's kind of a little bit about fake news a little bit, so it kind of just fits in there. Okay, so our next speaker is going to be talking about paranormal tours she took in prison. This is Jane, Jan Marshall, and she is a was a family psychologist here in Monterey County for many years. And she is a major cat lover, and she has an extensive collection of shoes. You must check out her shoes. She always uh, comes out with the most amazing shoes. Jan also assisted me in the 2014 investigation of psychic <clears throat> grief vampire Chip Coffee, 
I've written about this investigation under the title Operation Bumblebee. You can Google that. Jan played the part of a grieving sister of Linda, who died in Tower 2 in the 9-11 attacks. And I think Jan might have a career in acting waiting for her if she chooses. And uh, she will be giving us a short talk about her experiences attending a ghost tour in the Missouri State Pen. having me, um, but among my many talents, PowerPoint probably isn't one of them, so um, bear with me. Um, I've been wanting to tell this story. Uh, I call this my paranormal lockdown. Um, I plagiarized the title from uh, a series that's currently running on the television. Um, two tours of the Missouri State Penitentiary, October 3rd and 4th. I actually decided to take two tours, um, and by the way, I paid... Um, $25 for the paranormal paper and um, $14 for the, for the history tour, which tells you something. Um, let's see, next one. It's not up. There it is. Okay, that's um, the Missouri State Prison. That's where you first arrive. Um, at that front door to take your tour. Um, it, Missouri State Prison, or Penitentiary, opened in 1836 and closed in 2004. So, um, as you see, it's starting to fall into disrepair. And um, some of the famous inmates, um, they did house women, a few women, at the same time, were Emma Goldman, the anarchist, James Earl Ray, the killer of Martin Luther King was there, Sonny Liston, the, the boxer, served about five years for armed robbery, oh. pretty boy Floyd, um, Bob Rodella, who you probably <coughs> haven't heard of, but my guy I'd like, like to talk to you about because he was um, one of the famous inmates. He was sort of a Jeffrey Dahmer type from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, John Firebug Johnson, who um, served uh, 18 years in solitary confinement. And um, Bonnie Heady and Carol Austin Hall, Carl Austin Hall, you may not have heard about, but they committed a very gruesome um, murder of a child, and um, they were executed together side by side in the gas chamber. Um, Missouri State Penitentiary is known as the, four, the bloodiest 47 acres um, because they, they had a lot of riots and general mayhem, and there were 40 executions there between 1938 and 1989, 39 were in the gas chamber and one was lethal injection. Okay, it's widely recognized as a haunted venue. <laughs> it's featured on Ghost Hunters, the Sci-Fi Channel, uh, Ghost Adventures, the Travel Channel, it has its own documentary called Appar Apparitional. And if you look on the internet, it's on lots of haunted places to visit. It's reported to be the subject of over 100 paranormal investigations, and there's a growing body of anecdotal accounts of incidents reported on the internet and YouTube. And so, you know, I asked you uh, if you were going to be there uh, taking one of these tours, would you be a believer, a skeptic, or a sucker? Mm -hmm. A what? A sucker. <clears throat> so you can't just be a doubter? That's a skeptic. How <laughs> uh, about a disbeliever? <laughs> okay, I'll put that on my next presentation. So, um, I found out that um, the penitentiary is open to the public um, almost all months except January and February, and they offer a variety of tours. Um, they have history tours, two hours or three hours, and then they have paranormal tours. Um, uh, a lot more than history tours. You can take, I took the two hour history tour. Um, uh, at night from age 10, and then the next day a history tour from 1 to 3. But you can also take a three-hour ghost hunt tour, a three-hour ghost class, I don't know what that is. Um, you do a five-hour investigation, or an eight-hour overnight investigation, um, and the investigations you get to check out special equipment. Something, some sort of infrared stuff. I don't know what it is. And for bo both the history and the all the ghost stuff, you have to sign a waiver and release of information. Um, they also have gift shop, but it's not open at night. <laughs> um, and 
you may wonder, how did I end up in prison? I said, Miss Susan, I was in prison. Um, and the reason is, it was on my bucket list to take the um, mule ride at the Grand Canyon from the top of the South Room down to the bottom. And generally, you have to wait about a year to do that. And on a whim in August, I called them and asked them if they had any openings, and they did about two weeks later. So I went to the Grand Canyon in, in September and had to be at my sister's house in October, and I decided not to come home. So I just stayed on the road and did a bunch of crazy stuff, and then it, that's how I ended up in the penitentiary. <laughs> and in the gift shop, um, you could have your picture taken. <laughs> so that's me, and it says, just doing time. <laughs> Okay, so you start your tour here um, in what would have been the, you know, the control setting of, of the prison. And that's where everybody waits to start the tour, daytime or nighttime. And if you've been in prison, um, this would have been some of your friends while you were there. Um, and that is, uh, was my guy, who was a um, retired guard who was there for like 25 some years and he just loved the history of the prison and he was a great guy. He, um, he had all kinds of stories and things to talk about. And um, this is the yard and um, that's the porta potty. <laughs> they didn't even have functioning bathrooms anymore. So it was nothing luxurious, believe me. Um, and that's one of the buildings, um, that is the building where um, the cell blocks were like um, four feet high, four, four tiers high, and that's all, also the building where I'll show you later they had the dungeon cells. So a general tour, whether you take a ghost tour or a, um, a history tour, you generally see the control area. You see two main buildings. Um, you see that one. You see another one where they have um, also cell blocks, and that's the one where they had a big riot in 1954, where two prisoners fake being sick, overpowered the guards and took their keys. Everybody let out, um, got out and set the place on fire um, and killed a couple of people. And I think that's where the, the bloodiest 47 acres um, name came from. And then you go, you have to drive to it about four blocks away, and you get to see the gas chamber. Mm -hmm. But the nighttime tour, the so-called ghost tour, they don't give you a lot of history. It's dark. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have my camera at night. My only high-tech tool was a flashlight. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what you're doing for the ghost tour is um, you're told you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're prepped in the beginning with the idea that many strange things happen there. You, you know, if you're lucky on your tour, something will happen. And you're prepped in the beginning with a story of, you know, what's been happening recently. You're told that your best tools are your senses. So pay attention, you know, because you never know what may happen and trust your senses because, you know, you, if you think something is happening, it probably is. Uh -huh. Did anything happen? I'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's my guide again, and this is what I told him was my favorite part of the tour. Um, that, is, <laughs> that is the um, okay. monument to Mike the Cat. Aww. who was a prison cat that he's, he told a story about how he hated cats and he hated Mike the cat and they killed all the cats at the prison except Mike and the prisoners were allowed to put the memorial to Mike Aww. the cat. Aww. Wait, 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 wait. If they killed, <coughs> excuse me, if they killed all the other cats except Mike, why does Mike have a burial marker? Mike was special. <coughs> But then he died anyway. Well, everybody dies. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a display from inside the prison for the double execution, which must have been, you know, Bonnie and Carl. 
from Good Night Together. Okay, and here, here's a picture of the, you know, some of the, the cells, and so you can imagine when it's dark, you know, and the, part of the ghost tour is that, you know, they, what little lights they have, they turn off the lights and give you a chance to, you know, look around, and you go into the cells and see what might be going on. And here from the daytime tour, they show you, you know, some of the knives or shanks, that they call them, that they would confiscate from the prisoners. Um, here in um, the building, the dungeon building, they actually have a cardboard cutout of Sonny Liston, who was one of the prisoners. And this is the long hallway from that same building. And you go all the way down that hallway and go downstairs to where the dungeons are. And you can't imagine what it's like when it's dark. And they turn out all the lights and they like to go up and you can go all the way up the stairs um, to, I think, the third tier. And well, as you go all the way up to the top. And you hear things. Mostly what you hear is other people walking around. <laughs> Okay. And here's the picture of the guy, um, John Firebug Johnson, who spent 18 years in the hall. And he, he actually wrote a book about it, which you can buy on Amazon. And that's the same picture of the double execution. And when you, they take you down to the dungeon, and you know you go down the hall, and you go into a room, and it's going to be all dark. The walls get to the dungeon is going to be extremely thick. It has a straw floor and um, nothing in it except I get, you know, a pot to piss in, and, and mm. they let you go in there, and they close the door on you for a couple of minutes, and mm. so you can imagine what that's were those, like. Were those were solitary cells? Those were the cells for oh, solitary yeah. confinement? Yeah. Okay. What they, now what they call ad sick. Mm. And, um, okay, so there's another long, dark hallway, and then at the end of the tour, you get in your car, you have to drive about four blocks, and there's the gas chamber, and there's a double gas chamber. No way. <laughs> well, they only did one at a time, except for the two that wanted to go together. And there it is again. Okay, and this will be somebody's <laughs> picture, but there's me in the gas chamber. Okay, so these are the kinds of paranormal occurrences people report. Queasy feelings, sense of demonic presence, shadows, whispers in their ear, their hair being played with, door slamming when no one is present, tight feelings around their head, noises, voices, chairs moving, um, feelings of being touched. And at one time they had us all kind of gather in a circle and all be quiet and say, oh, is anything happening? And somebody's going, yeah, I feel something. <laughs> and so, you know, then when we left, you know, we all were sort of told, yeah, we had a really <coughs> special experience, something actually happened on our tour. <laughs> so Those this are all is, the same signs as marriage. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. You know? And so, you know, this is my explanation of how do they do it. And that all sort of came to the letter S. They set the scene. You know, I mean, it's a prison. It's dark. It's dirty. It's, you know, scary. Who wants to go there? It's the setting, you know. They tell you stories. It's haunted. Things happen here. You know, we know it. It's all happened before. It's the power of suggestion. You know, what kind of place is this? You're here on a ghost tour. You know, it's a social experience. You're here with other people here for the same reason. It's social empowerment. You have the tools. You know, <laughs> your best tools are your brain, your senses. You can do it. Other people just like you can do it. There's sounds, you know? These are empty cells. You know, there's people walking around. You're, you don't know what you're hearing. And you're special. You came here, you paid good money. You know, the more you pay, the more invested you are, because you're gonna get something out of it. And you wanna be one of those people that have the experiences. And my own extra you are a sucker. <laughs> and I forgot until a couple of days ago when I was putting this together that they took our picture at the end. They got a, we got a group picture. Wow. Um, it's, it was like 10 o'clock at night. I was exhausted. I'd driven five hours earlier that day from someplace in Arkansas. 
and I had to find myself in there. Um, but has, where's the laser printer, the laser beam here? That, there oh. I am. Oh. <laughs> in my picture. And here's some of the comments. Oh my, yet another excited ghost troop tour. People saying, we had a blast of good photos, some great activity. We will see you all again. We will definitely be back for an eight hour tour. <laughs> and in answer to your question, what happened to my tour? Nothing. Uh, I had a good time. But I came back the next day, and the day tour was much better. My conclusion, the facts, the truth, are much better. And it's a money-making thing. It's fun. But, you know, I asked them on the, there was our tour guide. There she is. Who are some of the people that might be haunting the prison? If you have so many famous inmates, so many horrible, violent people. And I was told, oh, we don't get any names. <laughs> there were so many inmates. I mean, at its highest capacity, the prison had 1,500, no, 5,200 inmates, oh, wow. when its capacity was maybe a quarter of that. We don't get any names. There were so many inmates, we don't know who they would be. I figure if it was such a hard place, once you get out, dead or alive, why would you come back? <laughs> but there's nothing specific, nothing, nothing at all. So, you know, the bottom line for me is nothing happened and the real stuff was much better than anything anybody made up. <laughs> yes. I just, uh, this is a, a state prison, so it's being run by the state of Missouri, this money made you mention? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, it was fun, you know, it was, it was really interesting, the, the real stuff, you know, if, if you like that sort of thing. But, but the other stuff is just, you know, it's BS. Yes. All right, here in California, we have Alcatraz, that's, I guess, considered a safe park. Is this like a state park for them? Um, it's a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. um, I also went, you know, I think, you know, this is strange, but so, to the Idaho State Penitentiary. Whoa. For a tour. Doubling up. Yeah. And now, they don't have the ghost tours. But I asked, you know, my tour guide there if there was any paranormal activity there. And he told me, yes, they do have people come in and do investigations. Which is different from if there's paranormal activity. Yeah. But, but they don't, you know, run the revenue-making activity there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Quite interesting. I think that maybe the ghosts there were probably the cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Idaho State Penitentiary has a cat too. His name.